forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Becker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. Today, I'm excited to have my guy, Mr. Keith Hackett, second with us. A great guy doing some great things, and I'm I'm truly grateful to have him on. So first, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. So, man, appreciate the opportunity and the time. I I know you're a busy man. I'm a busy man myself, but appreciate the time and opportunity to to be on this interview. And hopefully we could, hopefully I can share some light on some things and, we could both be a vessel in this time. Oh, it's on. Yes, sir. <laughs> sure, it's so. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, let's dive into it, man. I know off air we shared you know, a little bit about your background and your journey, but if you don't mind sharing some of that with the audience so they have an idea of who you are and what it is you do. Absolutely. So my name is Keith Agatha II, 23 years old. So I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Currently living in the Lexington, Georgetown area, kind of like the Central Kentucky area. And right now I'm going on staff of Social Research and Athletes as an area rep at Georgetown College, a little bit of background. So I played football and baseball at Georgetown College. So graduated in May of 21, uh, four years. Thank God I got the degree, played some ball, and met, met a really great – met, met, really, met a lot of great people out in Georgetown. And in that time, after that, I started as an intern with UK football, worked my way up to be assistant director of player development. Did that for about a year and a half. And, I mean, it was great. Learned a lot about life, be able to work with those guys. I was a part of the 20 – uh, 22 uh, Citrus Bowl Championship team. So that that was fun. I mean, 2021 Citrus Bowl Championship team. Had a lot of great guys on that team. Will Levis, Wondell Robinson, both great transfers. Uh, Josh Pascal, Jaquez Jones. There's a lot of great young men on that team to help yeah. build the program. And then that, uh, I was kind of the, the community initiative guy, just kind of the guy that helped them in life. I worked with a director named Courtney Love. He was one of my brothers and mentors and taught me a lot about life during that time. Yes, I was there for one and a half years. But the wisdom I gained in there in that time means a lifetime of wisdom. Then after that, uh, kind of kind of met a crossroad where it was fulfilling, it was good, but my heart wanted more. And I prayed to God, I'm like, God, break my heart for it, break yours. After I prayed that dangerous prayer, about a week later, I was coming from UK, and I was like, God, what's next? So I had an interview with three other schools. I interviewed West Virginia, Temple, had a few conversations before that landing, and nothing fell through. So I was kind of like, so, okay, God, like, what's next? And in that time, I was praying and kind of crying out to God, like, God, like, I need to start making money. I need to start kind of to help myself. And I just heard Psalms 4610, be still, be still. And in that moment, I just, I was still. And God said, you know what I called you to do, so do it. So at that point, I was like, all right, God, I'm about to take this step of faith out. And so FCA has been trying to get me on for years. And I said, no, no, like, I'm doing a football thing, I'm doing this football thing. And one of the – the U.K. guy at FCA told him, he's like, Keith, you have a gift. And until you use that gift, you won't be satisfied. And when he said that, I'm like, dang, like, he going to say that to me? <laughs> like, <I'm not> <laughs> he hits you, you in the face with that one. <laughs> no, gut, face, back, everything. <laughs> so, and then I called him, like, you know what? His name's Aaron Hogue. I'm like, you know what, Hogue? I'm ready. He said, all right, let's talk. And then from there, I've been uh, on board for FCA to go on staff here. Man, it's been a blessing. It's been an absolute blessing. And I'm still around sports, still around, yeah. excuse me, still around athletes. And I'm speaking the gospel and I'm uplifting. And I, that's all I want. I want to uplift and be in the hands and feet of Jesus and the love of Christ at every aspect and angle I can do and be. And with FCA, that that allows me to do that. That's awesome, man. Well, well, what are, what are three things you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Man, so three things I accomplished. Uh, First thing, first and foremost, uh, I gave my life to Christ. That's that's the thing that's been major to me. And I got baptized when I was seven. So, my, so I'm, I'm what they call a PK. My dad, the pastor. So I, I was in the church one day, Wednesday, Sunday, from sun up to sundown. So I was all the way yeah. around it. And hey, if, if, then, if, if from, from, as I'm just like my mom was minister of music. I don't know if I tell you that my mom was minister of music uh, in that church. Okay. And uh, if the if the church was open, we was there. 
Man. We went to church from can till can. <laughs> Man. Being that, no, we, we didn't say that just looking at the ceiling. <laughs> but, 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 it, but it's the life of a PK. So, at that time, when I was seven. Uh, so, parents were divorced at three. So, kind of living in a split household, jumping from back and forth, back and mom and dad's. And I, I'm the baby of the family. So, I was kind of the one that was getting drugged around in a way where I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I just followed my big sister. So I got baptized when I was seven. Thing like, all right, it, it'll it, it, it'll cure everything. It, I'll have all my troubles away. I'll be happy. But I didn't know what the true meaning of baptism was at that time. Then I went on a mission trip to Costa Rica and my sophomore year of high school. Uh, Redated my life back to Christ there, and that's when I had my first true encounter moment with Jesus. Uh, I got baptized like what they call a blue lagoon, and I mean it gives me chills to this day. And when I went down the water, they said, "Don't don't open your eyes because the chemicals in the water that burn your eyes." I opened my eyes. <laughs> my eyes didn't burn, thank God. But in that moment, I saw the gates, the gates of heaven open up. And I'm like, okay, God, you're real. Jesus, you're real. And ever since then, I mean, it's been a battle, but I know that I'm on mission for something greater than me. That's my first accomplishment. My second classmate get my degree. Uh, four years of college, man. So I started college at 17, graduated in 21. So I was one of those college kids that missed out in the junior year because of COVID. And be, it was – my college was good. It had I had many great people there. I was playing baseball. I had a great teammates, great coaches, and played football my last year. But it's the people in the community. And I learned in that time that community makes you who you are. And it was a great community at Georgia. I met so many great people, so many great brothers of Christ. And those last two years of COVID where we were away from school kind of hurt me. Because I was at home. I went in community. And I mean, I I was at a point like, man, God, I, I didn't go to school to do school. I went to school to play ball. <laughs> so in that moment, that was taken away too. And it's like, okay, God, like just give me strength to finish this because I want to do it for my for myself, but also for my mom, for my dad, for knowing that them like they put the sacrifice for me to get here and finish the race. So I did that, graduated in four years, thank God. And that was a blessing. And uh my third one is stepping in and calling the ministry. Uh, it might not seem that major to a lot of people, but it's major to me because I felt like I feel like I'm being obedient to God and obedient to what He's calling me to. And the fruit is being bared, and the seeds are being planted. And I'm not no big time preacher. I don't have a mega church, nothing like that. But I'm seeing lives getting changed around me, and it's nothing about I've done, but it's what the seeds that God has used me to be a vessel. Like if weeks ago, I had one of my close friends get baptized. I baptized him. Like football at Georgetown named Cade Mullins. Incredible story. Lost his father to cancer. It was lost. And we met two years ago. And ever since then, I was like, bro, like I don't know you. I know you don't know me and I don't know you, but I see your heart and I want to get to know your heart. And I baptized him a few weeks ago. I was like, God, and that's nothing but you. Before he got baptized, we were just crying, like, man, this is this is beautiful. Like this is what the this is what the kingdom of heaven is. And I told him, like, bro, like you're gonna see your father again someday. Because before his father passed away, he ended up getting saved mm-hmm. on his deathbed. And it's just like knowing that, having that story where, like, it's not – everything I said is none of my success. Yeah, It's the it's, it's God's glory being shown through me. It, man. And I that's it. all I want. That's all I want to be. That, that I found my success through his glory. Simple as that. I love it, man. Well, it's, it's awesome to hear uh, your journey – Awesome to hear the things that you're proud of. Definitely uh, three great things yes, uh, that's, that's bigger than yourself, right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. But, you know, just hearing those things, I would consider that to be hugely successful. So let's hit on success. What is uh-huh. your definition of success? Yeah, definition of success was a good question. Um, before, when I was in college and growing up, I measured success by numbers. Like how much money I had, how much I did, like what was my batting average, how many what was my OPA, how many tackles I missed. That's measured by numbers, but real true success is measured by obedience. How obedient were you on this trail of life, on this path of life, to where you don't care what happens, but you know that your obedience is a good thing in it, and what the good thing again is your obedience will fruit will come from it, and like I mean I know many successful people who are miserable. Because they 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 they've chased a number that they've chased a quota, but when you're obedient and passionate about something, success is second nature. Because you, you you're not happy, you have joy. 
you you have peace. And those are certain things that are, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to get nowadays. Like I, I was talking this one guy. I was like, man, there's there's so many millionaires in mansions with no purpose or peace because they just they they got everything in the world, but the one thing that they're missing is deep inside them that they don't have. They don't they don't understand. So su- success is good, but obedience is better. And when when I hear the word, all right, how, how successful are you? It's how obedient how obedient have you been on your on your in your life? And that measures the success in my eyes, man. Man, I got a, I got one word in response uh, to to what you just said there, man. And that word is boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh wait, that's three words. <laughs> I'll just, I mean, I as I mean, I, that's that's the truth, and. Man, because I, I know I could be doing something right now and be more yeah, successful yeah. For sure. than what I am, but I find my yeah. success in my obedience. Man, you know, uh, as you were saying that, I, I thought about a lot. You know, it made me think about upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it made me think about situations that we're in in our life mm-hmm. where we where we make the choices that determine our success. Absolutely. And, uh, you Absolutely. know, as you, as you talked about the obedience piece, I thought about you know, being raised in a discipline, like my mom was a pretty strict disciplinarian. She had yeah. play, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Man. Yeah, you feel that. Uh, oh, and, uh, <laughs> I felt that to the core, dog. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so, you know, just some of those things, I'm just thankful that God gave me the the wherewithal to be obedient, mm-hmm. you know, and to Absolutely. just listen. And, and even, even if it was something that, you know, I didn't understand, mm-hmm. I just did it, but because of the respect piece, and uh-huh. knowing the work that she had put in, Absolutely. sacrifices to take care of us. And that obedience has in turn allowed me to be successful in everything I do uh-huh. because it's a transferable skill. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you continue to use that because you're going to have, you know, bosses or people that so, or even people, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say below, beneath you, below you, like in right title or anything. Uh-huh. But there's always people around you that you're working with, that you're learning uh-huh. to grow with, and you have to be obedient to to everyone around you. <laughs> Absolutely. And that, and you said that respect piece. I mean, this yeah. respect is a law starting a generation, and I, it's my generation. I'm, I'll be the first to say it, and I'm not scared to respect is a lost art. And when you have that respect, when you have that respect and resilience, obedience will come. come because what you, what what people see as opposition is truly opportunity. Come on, it's dog. like uh, somebody I was talking to one of my homeboys, uh, Josh Pass. We he plays for Detroit Lions. Me and him are tight. Like why don't write one of my best friends, and uh, we were talking about suffering one day. And this is movie uh, Mark Wahlberg's in, and he said like suffering is to get to sanctification. And suffering, like we realize suffering is bad, but suffering is a gift. And we realize that just suffering is a gift. That's that pain is putting you for purpose. And that purpose shines on many other things. Because when you realize your purpose, only your true passions come out. And it, it, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears yeah. to do all those things. But when you get to the other side of it, it's the most beautiful thing ever. Because you, you fought the fight. You've understood the mission and you completed it without hesitation. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's and that's all that takes a route right back to success, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. But it's a, but yeah. it, but but it's about the choice the person makes. Either you're gonna do it and sit through it, or you're gonna run from it and it's gonna chase you for the rest of your life. And one of my favorite quotes I live by to this day is the pain. The pain of discipline is more has more power than the pain of regret. And regret, yep. Amen. Hey, amen. Likes. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Well, man, hey, um, as we close, I'd love for you to get an opportunity to share with the audience so they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love, mm-hmm. man, with all of the amazing things that's going on. Absolutely, man. So my uh, Instagram is k.hackett2. Uh, I think it's the, everything I love. I post a lot on Instagram, starting to try to impl- imp- uh, implement TikTok a little bit. Just kind of share word, just share word on there and just to be encouraging. And that, that's why I'm, I'm all about encouraging, whether I know you or not. I want to let you know that you're loved, you're valued, and you have purpose. 
with everything you're doing. Like, yes, this life is hard, but if 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 it ain't hard, it's not holy. Simple as that. And we we got to continue to push through and to know that man, God, God calls call, God has called each of us, everybody listening, everybody watching, do great things. But it's your choice to make that choice. Is is it's all on your obedience, your heart, your mind, and your spirit. And God already has it for you. You just got to be willing to choose God and go and go accept it. Simple as that. Man, so good. Yeah, that guy, that guy didn't lie to you when he said you had to call him out. He, he ain't lied to you. Yeah, I guess, man. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he, he didn't. He didn't lie. He didn't lie. To you. He told you. He told you the truth. Hey, when, man, he, appreciate when he hit that. you upside the head with it, man, he was right, man, man. And that's the thing. Like, I'll be honest. It made me sick because I knew he was right. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. and that's that's the thing. It made me Dang. sick when I know somebody right. <laughs> Cause like I want them to be wrong so bad, but I just know they're not. <laughs> hey, you like this? Like you, you right? You right? <laughs> Dang, you right? He right? I, I can't even say that. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. My hands up. All right. All right. Absolutely. Well, man. Absolutely. Again, I just want to say thanks so much for the time. I truly appreciate it, and I wish you continued success. That's a man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much, man. Man, much love to you. I love what you're doing, bro. Man, you keep it up. Seriously, it's a it's an inspiration, and like I mean, the the, the path is already written. We just both got to stay obedient and what it says on your hat. Go get it. Go get it. Man. Go get it. Go get That's it. it. Yes, well, uh, thank you, and thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. God bless, man. Go get it. <laughs>